This is Twit. Apple is bringing Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro to the iPad. Uh, you will have to buy it anew. In fact, it's a subscription, which means five bucks a month for each, a mere sixty dollars a year. I think that's a good deal. Frankly, Apple's been offering the, has had the best deal ever. You bought, I bought Logic like years ago, yeah. Final <laughs> Cut Pro years ago. Never gave him another cent for two ninety nine or whatever it was. So uh, you know, I don't mind. I think five bucks a month is a fair price. You will have to have an M one uh, or later iPad to use Final Cut Pro. You will have to have a A12 or later to use Logic. Uh, the you know we it's not out yet, despite what Stephen's showing us. It won't be out till May 23rd. Is that a real copy you've got there, Stephen? Or no, no. That last week, a basic <laughs> Apple guy on Twitter. He's a great follow, but he created a Final Cut iOS icon just for fun. <laughs> and uh, maybe he's got some inside knowledge. But he that's might. He might. Now we should he say might. it will not run on an iPhone. So. Right. <laughs> I, I knew immediately, and for good reason. Look at the UI. Uh, this is logic. <laughs> They're not going to fit on a six-inch screen, yeah. that's for sure. But but what a what a perfect way because because now we are we are the the uh, the multiple generation of we have to freeze frame whatever we're watching no matter what it is to look for like Easter eggs and 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 other clues and there is no better troll than to simply put an icon somewhere in the back of the screen so that people say oh my god Andy <laughs> forgot to to clear his desktop before <laughs> and Apple did do that century. didn't they there was a final at the last um, event wasn't there a Final Cut Pro on an iPad. I feel like there was. I, they now, showed off DaVinci Resolve the on the iPad. Yeah, they that did announce the DaVinci yeah, Resolve, they, yeah. Before before Resolve was announced. So Apple talked about DaVinci Resolve on the before iPad before okay. Resolve <laughs> was announced on its own. Yeah. Now, we know WWDC is June 5th. So there is a larger story, which is, well, why did Apple do this now? It would have been a big a, a WWDC level announcement, I think. Uh, we've been talking been. for a long time how about, uh, you know, this is Jason Snell's refrain. You made this amazing hardware and you don't put professional software on it. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. what a waste. I think that's one of the big problems that Apple has is that there's no real reason to upgrade your iPad very often because most of the apps run perfectly fine. My kids have the first iPad Pro 12.9. Um, and they're still using them just fine. <laughs> like, like, you know, like they don't ever feel like they can't do what they, that they're trying to do on it. And, and I didn't really feel the, the stretch until I put resolve on, on my iPad. Um, where it's like, Oh, maybe I need to get the M2, you know, as, cause I still have uh, with the M1, I felt like it was doing pretty well. And so, so I think that Apple, you know, I think we want to see more of these professional ads because the, the iPad is capable of it. It's just that we're not seeing the apps, you know, to, that take advantage of it. So I think it's a really interesting thing. I think that, that the membership had to happen. I've, Apple spent so much time talking to developers about using, um, subscription services that if they had put it out uh as a single item it would have undermined their entire th you know thread that they have about how you should run an app i i do think it's telling though because last year they had the ipad os announcement desktop class apps was like a highlighted headline there then they talk about freeform and so i do feel like final cut definitely could have had a huge moment at wwdc this year but I think it's because they're making room for a big announcement. I mean, the rumors about the VR headset are kind of yeah. all over the place. So maybe yeah. it's to make room for that and uh, other big announcements. Yeah, I, I agree with that completely. Apple uh, Apple isn't like Google. Google will Google will expand the length of their like their developer keynote to include anything that they think that they want to put in there. <laughs> Which, by Apple, the way, we're going to find out tomorrow because it's tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, have, and we're going to push. Got, we start at 10 a.m. I have a feeling we'll be pushing Windows Weekly in this week. You can Google. Yeah, because, because not, not, I mean, not, not to turn this into a Google podcast, but like whereas Apple has a lot of uh, Apple has just a lot of simple linear things to talk about. And hey, you know what? We don't we don't really have to. This is a developer keynote. We don't really have to talk about uh, we don't have to really announce uh, Final Cut uh, and new audio logic apps for, for the iPad right here. Whereas especially especially this year, Google's is shareholders. Please don't tank our <laughs> stock just because we don't have we don't have a chat bot and 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 also board. Please don't fire me as CEO. I'm doing an ever so hard a job right now. That's so, yeah, it's, it's going to be there's, you, there's you nailed it. On. It's going to be the Sundar Pichai apology tour tomorrow. We'll see. Actually, they're going to talk a lot about AI. I know they've got a folding phone, which they finally admit they're going to be making. 
they'll have things to say. Uh, but you know, it is, and, and it think, is refreshing to, to talk. I mean, to bring it to Apple, it is refreshing that I, I've always thought that Apple has a sort of sometimes an infantilized, infant, infantilizing attitude towards its users, saying, "Well, we everybody we hate leaks because we want the the delight and surprise our users." Like, well, okay, well, we're not eight years old, and this and this isn't Christmas Eve. It's like whereas Google Google is like, sure, oh sure, well sure, we'll we'll, we'll show you the folding phone. Oh, sure, we'll talk about yeah. we'll talk about this tablet because we're working on it for about six months. That's, that's perfectly fine. It's very different attitudes isn't it um yeah. i think my my read on it was just apple wants to clear the decks for yeah. Yeah. what will be the most important announcement well, of wwdc the vr visor yeah and there's a big question still around now this may be why suddenly there wasn't a lot of updates to final cut and a lot of people have been talking about uh, wow, we haven't seen any new features for like a year and a half oh. and people are starting to go well if apple and we went just went through nab where you know, Resolve and Premiere saw a lot of updates. And so a lot of Final Cut users were getting a little antsy and or are getting antsy. And um, and so I think that that this was um, I think that this clears the deck. But what we what we don't know is, is, is that the only thing that they're going to update? So a lot a, there there's a lot of tools that Apple has added to Final Cut in Motion that would make it very useful for the, the delivery of content to for AR and VR headsets. And so the question is, is, is the delay that we're seeing related to them putting a bunch of new features in that they can't talk about? And the team has essentially stopped working on everything else for the last year and a half you know, and, <laughs> and just working on getting the 3D um, tools up to speed, getting the VR tools up to speed. Those are all in there already to some degree, but they're not very well formed. That's you a know? good and point. So, You'll be using both Final Cut and Logic to create content for the headset, oh. won't you? Or, or, and potentially, and Apple's been adding, of course, Logic has been adding lots of um, of, of immersive audio tools and, and so on and so forth into it. But I think that also the that potentially Final Cut and Motion become some of the primary tools to drop video level um, work into an immersive environment. Um, and and we don't we don't know if that's the truth or not yet, but we will in a couple of weeks, you know. And 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 so it's it's going to be really interesting to see if that. If they roll out and that's why it'll all make sense if it do, if it doesn't they're going to have a you know uh, final cut will still do great <laughs> but it it will be it'll need to really focus on the social media you know uh environment because i think if they don't update within by october um i think that most professionals will start moving to other things and their market will and their market may, may it may be fine um, for their market to be mostly social media producers. And that's, that may be where Apple's going. And that also is easier when you make it available on the iPad. So so there's that could be the, the solution as well. Final Cut Pro for the iPad, reading from Apple's press release, introduces an all-new touch interface uh, and intuitive tools unlocking, unlocking new workflows for video creators. Uh, a new jog wheel makes the editing process easier than ever and enables users to interact with content in completely new ways. They can navigate the magnetic timeline, movie clips, and make fast frame accurate edits with just the tap of a finger or, better yet, the pencil if you have a One of the features Pro. Uh, I think is really exciting. It's it's called Auto Crop, and it shows some screenshots on the actual Final Cut page. But this is a feature that you see in things like CapCut and other apps that you can get for iPad where it will intelligently crop a full length 16 by nine clip to a vertical clip for things like reels and TikTok uh, thing on the subject. And what's interesting, did they is, buy that from oh, Quibi? <laughs> well, <that was> <laughs> uh, but it's funny because most companies will call this an AI feature. Like right. this is AI powered cropping. And if you look on Apple's landing page for final cut, they're very careful to not mention the words AI or artificial intelligence anywhere. But for the auto crop feature, it says intelligently adjust footage yeah. for vertical or other aspect ratios. And so I'm curious, it's farther farther down the page where you see like the uh, the glass blowing uh, candle thing. There's scene removal mask, which is like an auto green screen, which again is a takeoff like TikTok and what they do. Auto crop and voice isolation. Those are kind of three features put together. Hmm. Uh, curious if they will actually say these are like ML machine learning features, AI features, and if they'll bring these to the Final Cut on desktop, because this autocrop feature, as far as I know, is not in Final Cut for the Mac right now, and I'd love to see it. That would save me a ton of time. Yeah, that's that's really interesting to me, too, about whether, do they, are they going to decide to make Final Cut into a iPad-focused edition of Final Cut, meaning that they're going to have a pro-level editing suite for people who are likely to be editing on an iPad, or are they going to try to do, we're going to try to give you an equivalent experience as much as is humanly and engineering possible between these two platforms. So if you were switched to, so you could start editing a project on, on Final Cut for desktop, 
spend some time on the plane continuing the project on iPad and then continue back on the original when you come back. That's two different ways to do it. And with the M1 chip powering, uh, powering both of your machines, there's a lot of, a lot of potential there. Well, you, you it might... says on the page, you can send a project to Mac. So if you start in Final Cut on iPad, ah. you'll be able to send it to Mac. But it does not say you could send it backwards. And I mm, imagine yeah. there would be some compatibility issues if you start in Final Cut on a Mac and try to send it to the iPad. I don't think you'll be able to do I, that. And that's one of the too real bad powers, if you can't go for a full round trip. Yeah, I mean, one of the real powerful things there, though, is to be able to do an assembly while you're still shooting. And so, so yeah, that makes me think can, that's the point is, right, to bring the iPad to the studio. Yeah, and so you could be sitting there with an iPad and a director or someone sitting there, and they could be doing this on a laptop as well, but an iPad's kind of a nice place to do that where, um, now I don't think the iPad can ingest yet directly, but you could be potentially sending something via NDI or sending something up to Frame.io as ca camera to cloud and then pulling it back to the iPad in the same location <laughs> um, or and then being able to assemble things. And you can do that with Resolve as well. And so, so those are things that I think that being able to make those decisions, the reason that editing, if you have a, everything storyboarded and you start shooting everything and you start inserting them, a lot of times before you've broken down that set and set let go of the crew that you're spending $25,000 a day on, <laughs> you can go and shoot yeah. a couple inserts. Like, I yeah. need a couple hands to do this or I need something else. And so the, the closer we get to being able to edit while we're shooting, the, the oftentimes the more we just think of a couple things that would be nice to have for the editor um, later. And so, so those it's are like things a that fancy are video tap with a little more control. Yep. Tell me yeah. uh, just for those of us who are not pros like you, you can't ingest. What does that mean? Uh, it just means that I, right now there's no way that I know of that you can plug in um, some kind of card that would let you take the HDMI or SDI feed from the camera and capture it directly to the iPad. And so we don't, I, I don't think that it, it should be capable. So where would you ingest capable, it? You said if you have a NDI connection, you can watch it live, but how would otherwise, what are you going to do? Have to have a computer um, there and ingest again, it? Again, you'd save it to files. You, you'd either save it to files, you know, the cloud files, or you could do something, I imagine you could tie it into something like frame.io. So frame.io, you can right. have a camera to cloud, which is you have a Teradek or something connected to your camera and it's uploading while you're shooting. Every time you hit stop, it just uploads that file to, to frame and then people can pull it immediately down. And so those are those are ways to kind of get it in there really quickly. Um, it, it This is the beginning probably because again, the USB-C is capable of getting video in. We have other USB, USB devices that will capture uh, video. The M1 and M2 are definitely capable of managing that process. What's missing is the subsystems that would allow that to easily flow straight to files, you know, on onto the on there. And so that's but it feels you like can. I mean, close. one of the reasons probably they're requiring these higher end iPads is you can hook up a Thunderbolt drive to the iPad and use it yeah. as uh, well. Right. It, as your it's not clear. It's not clear from the information they've given whether you can edit off an SSD. That's something where LumaFusion on iPad, you can actually have the footage on an external SSD drive connected to an iPad with a Thunderbolt cable and actually edit with the footage sitting on the drive. Nowhere on this Final Cut landing page does it say you can keep footage on an external drive and uh. edit it in Final Cut. So you might have to actually transfer it onto the iPad directly uh, before you can edit it. But it's unclear. They didn't say anything about That's it. That's a big deal because, uh, you, it, you, I mean, they do make two terabyte iPads now. But still, and I think it, I think if we think about really large projects, we're probably going to go back to desktop. But where I think this really fits in is for social media. So if you're like, I'm going to go to um, Cinegear in a couple of weeks and we're going to shoot a bunch of stuff. I'm definitely going to take an iPad down and I'm just going to try shooting. I've done this with LumaFusion in the past, which is that, you know, if I want to shoot a short, I can I, I'm just going to try to shoot it probably with LumaFusion and with Final Cut just to see what what it feels like. But I could theoretically just be shooting everything with the iPad, have a nice little rig. You can get these small rig or um, uh, you know, um, uh, a couple different use the ones. iPad's camera. Have, yeah. Use the iPad's camera for social media. Absolutely. Yeah. Or, you know, I mean, like I have one of these little, you know, USB C dongles with an SD card slot on one side. And so like, I would bring my Sony a seven four mirrors. Pop it. Yeah. Just pop the footage and, you know, put it on the iPad and then edit it in final cut. Whether you have to copy or not will make a difference, of course, <laughs> to you. I, I mean, guess you wouldn't want to edit on an SD card anyway. You will, you would copy yeah. it to the iPad. Well, and I and I think that again, the when you're talking about wanting to turn things over really fast, I look at like shorts. You know, one thing I'm interested in is like, do the plugin architecture that works in Motion will it go over to work in Final Cut? Can I? 
for instance, save a bunch of effects that I build in motion that might be my lower thirds, might be my my um, text ups and so on and so forth that are all designed the way I want them and I just have to type them in, that would be an, an incredible integration. But I don't know whether those will be supported, at least in the first version of iPad. So lots of well, questions of, raised by this Apple announcement, yeah. obviously. Go ahead. Well, Stan. one other word on external devices on the page under the monitoring settings, it talks about capturing ProRes footage on iPad, but you'll also be able to monitor external microphones connected to the iPad. And this is a big deal because I deal with a lot of microphone and podcasting and iOS devices, and it's largely like a black box. Like you usually are not sure if it's using the external microphone. You don't really get audio levels from the external microphone. And so here it looks like they're making an effort to encourage external mics, show you that monitoring live on the iPad screen. And so I feel like maybe a year or two from now, we might be close to that kind of ingest of video footage, whether it's an external mirrorless camera connected via a cable or a webcam. And I do hear from a lot of people that wish they could connect things like external cameras to an iPad for a video podcast or whatever. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. Enjoy elevating your IT skills with IT Pro from ACI Learning. Get exclusive access to practice labs, tests with real-world simulations, hands-on experience, and test preparation. Learn the way that works best for you. Visit go.acilearning.com slash twit to transform your talent with the best-in-class education from passionate experts.